age, our sex, our race, whatever it is, unites us to people. But precisely it divides us from people. And in the Church of God, all those human divisions, all those human constructions of unity, are overcome in the gift of the Spirit, or are meant to be. But are they? I remember somebody saying to me in the Gambia on one occasion in my early days, uh, of course, if you are an Acre church. And I corrected them and said, in the Congo Western, in the Central River region. But then I asked myself, if, uh, by a gift of tongues, I go this morning to speak a language which I do not speak, a language that I have preached for watch night service and sometimes for funeral service, when I see the whole congregation united in common humor and delight, and I sit wondering altogether what has been said. I do ask myself, is it an act of The late President and I, after Easter, went to visit uh, housebound members of the church. We visited one couple and we were told that they had helped a couple, not a very educated couple, to Christian faith. Had they advised them to go to the Methodist Church of which they were members of worshippers? No. They advised them to go to the Roman Catholic Church because there they would be able to follow the worship more easily. It wouldn't simply be in English. They were not well educated enough to be able to enter fully into an English service. Has language made us a church of one group? I was very struck on Friday at Bethel Nursery Prize Living in Passing Up. But when Sister Sarah King, the head teacher, began to speak, she spoke alternately in English and one. She knew that there were children and the guests might understand him. Many of the parents would not. So we were all enabled to share in the occasion as fully as each other. Until the end of the 19th century, services in Banjo were also in one. We have to ask ourselves as a church, do we deny the unity that the Spirit gives? by making our worship accessible only to some and not to all. So second, the Spirit gives unity. Jew and Greek, slave and free, we are all in the one Spirit baptized into the one body. And then third, the Spirit gives ministries or services. In verse where it says that the, the, there are variety of gifts, but the same spirit. The gifts that God gives to the church are varied. Varied in their form, varied in their expression. But their origin, their source is one, that is God. And their goal is one, the upbuilding of the church. They are hugely varied. The magnificent gift of apostles and prophets and teachers. The colorful gifts of prophecy and tongues and, and healing. God says to Paul here, there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit, varieties of service but the same Lord, varieties of activity but the same God who is active in all. The Jasons have come to us with their varied gifts. I will not enumerate them, but I will indicate, for example, of Dr. Mark, the gift of preaching.
preaching and teaching and administering of Sister Sarah, the gift of counsel. For God's gifts are not limited to the ordained or limited to the lay members of the church as we describe them. God's gifts are to all members of the church. Indeed, if you don't have a gift of the Spirit for all, you are not a Christian at all. God gives gifts to everyone. He does not give the same gifts to everyone, and he does not give all the gifts to anyone. He doesn't give anyone all the gifts because we need each other, and he's binding us together in the body. But equally, he will give five gifts, maybe to one and two, or one every to another. God gives his gifts as he wills to give them. And we need to ask ourselves whether we exercise the gift that God has given us. And if the church is not flourishing, is it not flourishing because you are neglecting the gift that God has given you? If a minister is not engaged daily or weekly in pastoral visiting, if a minister is not thoroughly preparing worship and preaching, he or she is neglecting the gift of God, repudiating what God has given to them. If a class leader is not visiting every housewife or absent member, is not meeting with the class so that they may be built up in the faith, he or she is repudiating the gift given by God. If you are not doing some piece of service in the church for the upbuilding of the church, you are repudiating the gift that God seeks to give you. God has given to each of us a gift. And if there is an empty seat at a committee meeting, one must ask whether that person is taking God seriously who has given that gift of leadership, which is being repudiated, though it is being accepted. The church will not flourish if the gifts God has given us are gifts we decline to exercise. And the church will not flourish if we do not encourage in others the gifts God has given them. If we hold on to our office too long, others are not able to enter into that office. When a fortnight ago and a week ago in Combo Western, we confirmed, uh, in one case 20, in another case 30 young people, were they going to find this a church in which their gifts could at once be recognized and exercised? Or were they going to come into a church that expected them to be those who were led until they came away? God gives gifts of ministry to the church. If we do not exercise the gift he has given us, if we do not encourage in others the gifts he's given them, then the church will not flourish because we reject the gift of God. So we see these three things. Let us pray. Loving God, our Father, we thank you that your spirit is at work in our lives, even though we so often resist the working of your spirit. We pray that in your mercy you will not abandon us, but that you, having led us to faith, will keep us faithful to the end, expressing our faith in word and deed and life. But you have given unity across tribe and language and class and race may sustain us in that unity and enable us to sacrifice so that we may express it. And that you who have given us ministry in your church may give us, we pray, the humility to receive those gifts 